Today's show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch that we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their pitch right pouches are jam packed with over 200 billion fresh yeast cells, guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers who live to help other brewers learn more and ferment better. Join any recipe receiving tier of our Trub Club and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and come brew with us. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Sanitizer suck back, filtering carbonated beer, oxidation from sloshing in a carboy, and how long is too long when cold conditioning. This is Homebrew Happy Hour, episode 265. Hello and welcome back to another fun-filled episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page, where now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I'm your host, Joshua Steubing. Today I'm joined by the Director of Operations at cmbecker.com down there, Mr. James Carlson, as well as the President and Chief Keg Washer of Keg Connection, the premature wave for Mr. Todd Burns. Gentlemen, que paso? Yeah, nada mucho. <laughs> nada mucho. Muy bien. Y yo quiero uh, ver the, the, the episode solo en español. No? no uh, I said okay, that. no problem. I said it wrong. I said so it wrong. listen, uh, I, I, gotta, I have to mention right off the bat that when you said what the questions were, you, you messed one of them up. What, what did I do? What did I mess up? You said something about uh, how long is too long cold conditioning, and it's how long is too long... <laughs> In the secondary fermenter. Uh, I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'm going to leave it oh, how I said it. Great. Uh, well, great. Be, <laughs> well, you're right. I, I for, You're right. And and here's how we'll get to that. That's actually the last question on this week's, ep, uh, this week's episode. Uh, I am so bad about conflating co- secondary with cold conditioning that my brain, when I was typing in the title, just – you're absolutely right, though. The question doesn't say anything about cold conditioning. It says secondary. And I didn't, yeah. and I didn't follow up with that person. So I. Have so no- if you Googled and you were looking for the answer to that question, we are not going to give it to you today. So no, we will. We'll give it to you anyway. How about that? <laughs> we will. It'll be a twofer. Yeah. So I don't yeah. have to edit anything. That's there you how, go. That's how. God we- forbid you should have to edit. God forbid. Or, or, or do any kind of work. Yeah. Thank you. You know. <laughs> Thank you. There's this new movement on Reddit called anti work, and I'm the mod for it. I uh, happen to be the one. Uh, you know, the the premise is just basically I I want money. Uh, I was wondering where you were spending all your time, so that's good to know. <laughs> it's good to know, <laughs> jerk. Anyway, we do have a great episode for y'all. I'll get right into the small talk, the relevant small talk. The if this is your first time tuning in and you're like, what is small talk? It's always relevant and on topic and pertinent information that you need to know. Uh, starting with, we are at publishing new episodes of Booze News Weekly every Monday. We did our second episode this last Monday. I've very, been- very good episode, by the way. I uh, listened to it. Did you act? Did you really? Yep. Whoa! Do you even listen? Uh, uh, almost all of it. Yeah. Well, you know, no, I, yeah. I listen to it. I listen. To it. <laughs> almost all of it. It's like twelve minutes long. That, <laughs> the the whole reason I was not going to be surprised that you said you listened to it is because it's so short form. Because you don't listen to these episodes when you're on them, right? Yeah, I'm on them. Yeah, I mean, I've already heard them. <laughs> that that is a that is a good point. I I, yeah. I listen to them when I'm editing them. And, and then usually I listen to them again. If someone goes, Hey Josh, you accidentally left something in that episode. And I go, Oh crap. I hope Todd doesn't listen to it. And then we, I move on with my life. But, yeah. the, but the booze news weekly. Yeah. It's our new short form, uh, industry news update show. We're just trying to do, we, I like the industry we're in. It's my favorite industry full of my favorite people. And we're trying to branch out in regards to creating new content and getting new people in, 
you know, with the industry news part, we're hoping to, I mean, my, my not so well kept secret is we want to get people into the hobby of having craft beer at home, brewing their own or having keg raters set up, drinking. We, we have a vested interest in sharing, spreading, cultivating the hobby of, of fermentation enthusiasm. So that, that's ultimately my goal is trying to reach new people. And I've been happy with the reception for Booze News Weekly. And if you ever have tips or industry news you think we should cover, you can email Joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com and I'd love to include it on the show. It's not like this show where when we take your question, we give you a $25 gift card to Keck Connection, but maybe one day it can be. I don't know. We'll figure all that out. But that is uh, one of the small talk. The second one is it's not too late to join our Trub Club in a recipe receiving tier and get this month's, uh, which is, let me see if I have it. There it is on the screen. Y'all can't see it. Smash the Galaxy. It's a smash IPA recipe. Todd actually has it in your... Um, in your conical or what it's, is it? It's, uh, it's in the secondary and it is cold conditioning. <laughs> Two separate things going on there, <laughs> just to be clear, which yeah, is yeah. part of the secondary and cold conditioning. But now I'm just I, I I just want to say right now that as of last weekend, I have 45 gallons of beer cold conditioning right now. Holy and James has another 15. So we have 60 gallons of beer cold conditioning well, and at my, this very moment. And my 10 of Kolsch. That I've got. Oh, yeah. Where is it? Cold conditioning. In my uh, garage refrigerator. Nice. Mm. So we have 70 gallons of beer cold conditioning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm bringing you all that uh, in February. I told I told James. You awesome. Can, you can have that. Yeah, we got a. We also have a guy coming down to brew with on his new brow tog tomorrow. That's so right. Be another 15 gallons. And and part of the small talk, too. I'm glad you segued us there. We're it's doing 80. a live brew day tomorrow with Daniel. Mm-hmm. He he purchased a brow tog, and he happens to live not that far from us. And so Todd was like, well, you know, Josh, you could always take it to him. And I said, oh, actually, it was your idea, wasn't it, Todd? I was about Thank to you. take. Oh, I was about to take credit for your idea. <laughs> Todd said, why don't we invite him to come brew on our system? We'll brew with his controller because what James likes to do, remember, guys, the brow talk is all in-house. We did everything yeah. besides literally make the kettles, but James did all the passivating, all the branding on it. You know, everything is in-house. And so James likes to do a brew day on our kettles with your controller mm. to make sure it's calibrated as much as possible before sending out so that when you open it, your first brew day is basically ready to go out of the box. You set up your stuff and you're starting to brew. And and so far that's been well received, right, James? Yeah. Yeah. We've had really good uh, feedback on the unit and the controllers, mainly how easy they are to operate, which was our goal from day one. Yeah. They're very easy to operate. We, we, we would have made the kettles, but we could only... F- we we can only get to the point where we can milk lead, and we thought that would be an issue. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a lot of lot of hands on on those for sure. A yeah. lot, and so but but the the good thing is we know these, and by we James and Todd know these systems like the back of their hands. So supporting them is a breeze, and that's why y'all you know have offered so much support when people buy them if they need it which fortunately everyone who's used it says they love it and so they haven't had to have a lot of support from you one we were i remember james's biggest fear because this is all in house and it's our baby was someone's gonna get it and they're gonna hate it and they're gonna call and they're gonna hate it and someone someone (laughs) wrote in like hey i got it and it's not turning on and what's going on and immediately i saw the email and i was like oh no oh no i gotta call james i gotta call (laughs) yeah call me down i don't know how excited i get yeah you're like oh this is it this is the end and then but it was just breakers that's all it was the breakers on the inside of the thing were just off he turned to mine oh I can use it now. So it usually is, is straightforward stuff. We haven't had that catastrophic call yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I think it's super important to, to do a test run or a, a brew a batch of beer on the controller. That way, you know, it, there's a lot of connections inside that controller and I hand build each one. And if you have, you know, if you have a control, like a high end current lug loose can create a little resistance and heat. You know, we, we started off what, Three years ago, Todd, working on this or more, yeah, or more. Yeah, the hardest part was getting, you know, familiar with the circuits and the controller. And we started off with a, a I actually hand built one from scratch, ordering parts online, 
And that was the very first one. So it was a good learning experience for me. And we've come a long way, I think. I agree. And like I said, I'm super proud of the system and I don't have a lot of my own time invested in it in regards to development. But what y'all came up with- You got a lot of advertising and work on that end. I did like how the the metal signs like right behind Todd's head, I did like how those turned out. I was involved in that. Yeah. But um, I I am, I'm super excited. So members, any level of our Trub Club, if you check your inbox tomorrow morning, we're going to start the live stream around 11 a.m. Central patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour come join us the live brew day we did on new year's day was so well received that i committed to doing at least one live brew day a month and because it's still january this is like this is two in a month we're starting off 2022 yep over delivering i've never done that in my life as long as you've known me todd i've never over delivered i'm very impressed very good very, so very good. we will be brewing and spoiler our february recipe for recipe receiving members of our chub club is the Dusseldorf Alt Beer, and that's what we're brewing tomorrow. Yep. So I'm, I'm super excited. Todd wanted to brew it because he thought we can brew it. Now, the Alt Beer is not one where you turn around quick, but the idea being we brew them early so that we can talk about how our batch turned out while it's still the month of that recipe, right? That was the. Yeah, and we'll, we'll know how it turned out. I mean, we've got enough time to where we'll be able to taste it in the in the secondary at the very least, right, James? So. Well, it's going to go in a conical, so we won't really have to do anything on the secondary. We'll uh, we'll just we'll just no, the, during it. the coal crash process. See, I just yep. mixed it up, J- Josh. Ha ha ha! Ah. No, don't worry, Todd. I'll edit that out for you. I will not. Um, so yeah, well, that- I'm a, I was going to put my five gallons in the secondary, so we could try yeah. it in the second. I'm joking. I, yeah, I know you are. <laughs> so yeah, that that is february 2022's recipe kit but again let me get it back on screen it is not too late if you want the smash the galaxy ipa kit go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour sign up for any of our recipe receiving tiers and you will get that if you sign up for the oh wow look at those on the screen if you sign there's, noth- there's nothing on my screen I, I, I was kind of having an inner monologue out out loud um if you if you sign up for every other month in january that'll ensure you get the february go, go read the details at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and then the january giveaway which will be monday i'll happen to be up at headquarters i'll be up there tomorrow for a day trip and i'll be up there monday tuesday monday we're giving away for uh again everyone who's in our trub club at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour is automatically entered in to win a beer line cleaning kit with a 16 ounce bottle of sand step sanitizer so Again, go check it out. The All the stuff's in the description below. You can join us. We appreciate your support no matter what tier you're at, but I promise you when you're in a recipe receiving tier, you have more fun in the Trub Club. Or some people pronounce it Trub Club. I won't judge you however you want to pronounce it, but that's all of the small talk I believe that I have, unless you guys have anything to add. That's Is it, it pronounced... Youper or Yoper? <laughs> I think Lorena says Youper, um, <laughs> but I'm just a dumb Southern yokel. What do I know, right? Uh, <laughs> Who are you call? All right, yokel? so we're, we got questions. Right? I do have questions. So starting with, we've got four questions on this week's episode. Our buddy Peter texted in to three two five three zero five six one zero seven. Peter wrote. I moved my fermenting bucket into my fridge and noticed that some of the sanitizer in my airlock is missing and must now be in my beer. Is this going to be a problem? Ooh, cold crash suck back. Oh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. It just means your beer's clean. (laughs) (laughs) Please give us a real answer. (laughs) Oh, no, it's not a problem. I, I, I I do it all the time. In fact, I've decided after reading this question, I asked myself, why do I keep putting a little sanitizer in there? I'm just from now on, I'm just going to put a little RO water in there because I always end up sucking some back in there. Yeah. Oh, RO water. That's fine. Is it? I was going to say, well, so the traditional mindset is that you use sanitizer in case of of overflow or suck back, right? So that nothing gets contaminated with whatever might be in the air lot. So, but would RO water not potentially? I, I no, never I used sanitizer until until somebody used it, and I was like, oh, maybe I should use sanitizer. I don't know why I started using it. Yeah, Jane, when I very first started, I used vodka. Did so, you? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever have suck back to where you noticed the vodka in the final beer? 
Or did you never yeah, have gallons it was, of beer? Nah. Yeah, it just it it wasn't a concern to me because it was alcohol and you know it's <laughs> I'm making alcohol. So, oh, well, see, suck back from from cold conditioning. I've never had it to a noticeable degree. Obviously, uh, we always use our air lots to the fill line, right? Like we always put sanitizer to the fill line, and it might be a little bit less, but it's always been negligible. If Todd, if there was like a full fledged suck back where all the liquids out, do they need to do anything? Like, do you need to put more? RO water or vodka or sanitizer in the well, airlock or it, uh, an airlock should never it shouldn't suck back below that line because it doesn't have anywhere to suck back from. Oh, good point. But the most of the suck back is when you get a really solid fermentation and you, it, you're actually adding to it. So it, it goes above that fill line because it's coming up through the uh, you know uh, through the bubbler. And filling up the bubbler, I've even had it flow over the top of the bubbler. And, and that's the reason a lot of times I like, I actually like to take lines and, and, and run hose into a bucket instead of using a, uh, instead of using a little bubbler. It really, I think it really depends on the style of beer. Like if you're brewing a Hefeweizen, you don't want to use bubblers. It, it's going it, to, they're so, it's so volatile usually, or it has been when I brewed them that I always use hoses going into buckets. I noticed a bucket in your ferment. I'm going to call it your fermentation chamber. You've made a bedroom in the barn, basically a fermentation chamber. Most of those are going from their, their buckets. The the majority of those vessels are buckets. You're doing blow off tubes, but on two of them, you're not. Was that because you ran out of tubing or was that for a different reason? Why you didn't? Yeah. Cause my dog ate several of the lids that had the (laughs) uh, part on there. (laughs) I, that's my favorite reason. It was Charlie. It was Charlie. Yeah, wasn't it? it's Charlie. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Like I said, I I don't have any problem using bubblers on most on a lot of beers because they just don't bubble enough to where it's a problem. And I don't even care if it bubbles a whole lot and some comes back in. All I really care about is sometimes it bubbles so much and there's so much crap in there during the high crowds and that it it actually will stop it up and it'll blow off of there. I got you. And James, when you're using Big Bertha and or the Spike Conical there at headquarters, are you ever using bubblers mm-hmm. on those or is, are they always blow off tubes? I do on the the big one because uh, just it's, it's got so much airspace above it that it's it's never been an issue. We've never it gets 27 gallons. And if we add the lid, uh, it's 42 gallons. So. You know, we can only do as max 18 gallons with our uh, brow talk system. So when you've got that much airspace above the wart or the beer, it's not going to be an it's issue. It's just not going to be an issue. Right. So that's the yeah. secret, Peter, is just having so much headspace. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I, I think Peter's question ultimately boils down to relax and don't worry. Right. Like like whatever. Yeah. Whatever came back in it, the sanitizer, it, it is negligible in regards to the percentage into your, like you're not going to get poisoned. Your, your, right. your batch of beer yeah. is not going to poison you because some of your airlock uh, dribbled back into your, your now fermented batch of beer. I'm saying that in confidence. Right. I can say that in confidence or do I have to. Edit yeah. That? I mean, don't don't fill your bubbler full of concentrated sanitizer without Either. putting yeah. five gallons yeah. of water in it. But uh, yeah, there we yeah, go. You want you want uh, diluted. You want correct sanitizer. You want you don't want thank- to put just pour straight from <laughs> Th- no thank you, know, you. Full strength in there. Thank you for covering my bases because I I was thinking that same thing every when we say we use sanitizer in the airlock. It's from a batch that we usually do for five gallons to ferment yeah, everything. One one ounce of sanitizer mixed with six gallons of water and then. <laughs> Uh, half an ounce of that six gallons of water put into the uh, correct. The You're right. Yeah. yeah, we are never taking our sanitizer and and directly pouring it in there. We, it is always we we also. I don't think it's just because we're frugal. It's just smart to we make a five gallon or a six gallon batch of the sanitizer for either the keg or in a bucket for the siphons or for anything that needs to be sanitized on that brew day and or transfer day, and then we're taking from that diluted mixture and filling up our air lots. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad y'all right. covered that. Cause you're right here. The, the, the audio snippet people would hear is pour sanitizer into it directly. And then when it gets in your beer, it'll be fine. No, it will not be fine. But if it's diluted and all I, that, I didn't really think anybody would think that. I mean, people, our listeners are smarter than that. They are. They are yeah. smarter than me, but the bar's low. I'll tell you what I do, and it works real good, is when we get down to where the sanitizer bottle's empty, I'll fill it up with RO water 
swirl it around and I'll mark on their airlock uh, sanitizer. It works fine. That is, that is perfect. Yeah. And, and making sure we get every last drop used. So Peter, yep. don't overthink it, man. And while you're at it, let me remind y'all as we move on to the next question that we do take, or pardon me, if I take your question on a future episode, I do give you a $25 gift card to catconnection.com. Get yourself some more sanitizer while you're at it, Peter. Moving on to question number two, came from our buddy Simon, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Simon wrote, Dear Josh, Todd, and James, I want to try filtering my homebrew with a filter. Now, I also use a spunding valve and carbonate under pressure. I usually cool. let the beer self-carbonate before transferring to a keg, and so saving a little t- a little on CO2. Is it possible to filter an already carbonated beer with the standard 10-inch filter, or should I filter before carbonating? Thanks for your help. James, you're the filter guy. Well, I, I got to ask first, is that my dad, my brother, or my nephew? Uh, when I saw, yeah. when not I, many people are named Simon, except for those three. That or, right? or Simon Peter. or Yeah, there's some Simons. Oh, hey, the first guy was Peter. Oh, this is perfect. Any, any, any person who's read the, the Bible. Anyway, so James, I'm kicking it to you. You're the filter man. This is yeah, not I've, just to remind I've, you that we got to do that video at some point, but also yeah. what, what are oh, your that's, thoughts? Uh, you stole my thunder. I was going to say, <laughs> all you got to do is watch James and Josh's video that they yeah. did on filtering. Cause, cause we, we get like five emails a week with people asking when y'all are going to yeah. do that. That's true. Anyway, yeah, I got one yesterday. Yeah, no problem. We, with our conical, we're always, once we do, once we do the, uh, diacetyl rest, and do the cold crash because most of our beers here lately have been lagers. Well, when we do the cold crash, I'll hook up the splending valve and, and hook it up to gas. So it'll, it'll carbonate. And, uh, I've, I've had no problems filtering carbonated for, or actually wouldn't be war to be beer. Never had any issue. I can't imagine what I'm, would cause the issue because, uh, I mean nothing uh, nothing well, about the I, nothing about the body of the beer becomes well, inherently here's, different. Here's what could here's what could happen is you know, as that beer warms and it's passing through the filter, the CO2 is gonna want to leave it and you're you might have some airspace in the in the filter housing just because that CO2 is coming out of solution. Uh, what I usually do is I just turn the filter upside down to where it's coming in and it, you might get an air pocket. But just remember, that's not oxygen, that's CO2, so there's no chance of oxidizing the, the beer. You just want to make sure your filter and everything's closed. It, it can't suck any oxygen in. But uh, that would be the only thing that you might see as it's going through the filter media and warming up. It's going to CO2 is going to want to leave, so you may have a little air pocket. Um, don't worry about it. It's just it's just a reaction to the heat, the heating of the of the beer interesting and still warming and still todd and i are here have never i've never filtered a beer todd you've never filtered one either have i've you? filtered one yeah oh you have so do you have is everything james said get your thumbs up and seal of approval or do you do it do you see yeah i've only filtered thing? once and i i didn't i had issues so i i haven't done it since but was it carbonated or was it not carbonated when you were filtering carbonated oh okay and that wasn't the issue though no. What was the issue? Oh, the filters just stopped going. I, I think I used to uh, find of a filter. I just, I just cold crash everything to the point where it's clear. And I, I just don't, I don't filter. I, I, um, I mean, I'm, I, I think it's, it's a, be a good thing to do, especially if you're not cold crash, you know, if you can't cold crash, I think filtering would be really helpful. And Todd's not exaggerating when he says we get f- five is on the low end, dude, because I think that mm-hmm. between the three of us, it's probably closer to a dozen or more of a week of people, different people, not just the same people following up like, hey, I want to know about filtering or hey, what about? Yeah, what about I would watch it. I mean, I'd, I'd like to know how to do it right. Well, not just the uh, video. I just mean it is interesting to me how bright beer is a priority for a good chunk of people in our community like yeah, not, yeah. not just I mean, good tasting beer is obviously the number one priority that we all share but 
presentation, like we've said a million times before, is also a growing priority for people. They want that beer to not just taste good, but to look good. And for James, filtering is like the easiest way to achieve that, right? Without having yeah, to- it gets you there quicker. But I will say that what we use is we use a one micron. Um, if you wanted to really make it make a really cool setup, you're going to lose about a half a gallon of beer is you would get two filter housings and you'd run a five micron coming in and then pass it through a one micron or even go from a five to a half a micron. But you got to understand every micron rating that drops, the price goes up. So you can get the five and even the ones, you know, if you buy a box of 50 for, you know, one or two bucks a piece, but a half a micron filter is going to cost you $20. $20? And that, yep. and you're gonna have to use one for every batch you filter. Yeah, I throw. I, I, you know, I just don't feel like there's a there's a need to reuse something like that. A uh, five will get you bright, sparkling beer. Uh, one will will you won't have particulates, but it won't necessarily. It's going to be a good looking beer, but it won't be crystal clear. To get it crystal clear, you'd have to have a half a micron. Now, in that hypothetical setup, you're talking about losing a half mm-hmm. a gallon, right? Would yeah. you, as the brewer, if you knew for a fact, hey, I, this is my new setup now, would you compensate for that on brew day, or would you just eat your losses when it comes? Yeah, time I think to- they, I think they, uh, the the big commercial breweries, they do it to get rid of the proprietary yeast, you know, when they do the filtering, and a lot of times they'll do it also with the centrifugal filter. I, I think you said I think you said that backwards a second ago, James. You, you what you meant was fives the uh, fives the coarsest, ones finer, and half a micron's the finest, right? Yeah, as you drop okay. down in okay. micron, yeah. the price goes up. So if you go when you go from a one to a half a micron, it actually will it'll that's when you start seeing big price increases. I haven't found yeah. anything under 20 bucks on a half a micron. Crazy. It's just not worth it yeah, yeah. to me to spend that kind of money that you're just going to throw away. Yeah. But, but again, though, would you, what, what I was asking, like, are you, you brew, you know, Todd, what, do you, what are your match batches? Your 18 gallon is what you're doing on the high end. Yeah. And so you wouldn't have any issues still yielding three, five gallon kegs, even if you that's, filter. I mean, that's why I do it, but you don't filter. Oh, but, oh, because of when you're transferring. You, yeah, I only get, I mean, I, if I brew 18, 19 gallons, I, I get usually about five gallons in each keg by the time I'm, uh, you know, you get, you got a, you're going from your fermenter into your, into your, uh, sorry, you're going from your boil kettle into your fermenter. And then you're going from your fermenter into the kegs and you're, you're losing, losing volume each time because, yeah. you know, there's stuff on the bottom, uh, of both of those that that you don't want to put in there. So you lose volume twice. And by the time you get to kegs, you get about five gallons. I mean, some, sometimes I get five and a half, you know, fill the keg all the way to the top, but, uh, but not always. Right. So. And when that batch of Kolsch, you actually had enough to put in a little two gallon keg at the end of it. Didn't you? Yeah. But it, it had about, uh, once I actually tried it, it had about a, maybe a cord in there. Oh, so. was it? Okay. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. I, uh, that was the day you and Lorena kid and I was outside yeah. work. We filled them until they were coming out of the, uh, <laughs> that was a blow the off. Side. Yeah. They <laughs> actually the were coming out of the top out of the blow off on all three of them. So yeah. that is three full kegs. It and, was, you know, five gallon kegs hold more than five gallons. So that's, that was a yeah. lot of beer. It was a lot. Well, I still have, uh, probably four, three and a half gallons of that keg that you gave me. And my dad and I just started drinking off the five gallon that, uh, I had made, Bef- I guess during December, and then the ten, wow. and then the ten I have fermenting now. Yeah, well, you know, wh- you mine's did- been gone a long time. You drink, yeah, faster, mine too. Yeah, my- <laughs> <laughs> yeah when, when James texted like I don't have any, I was like, because y'all drink it faster than we do. Uh, <laughs> we we're all because Christmas got canceled at my house. We we hey man, I live in Duster freaking <laughs> Texas. <laughs> I'm not judging. Google it on a map. <laughs> What do you know? You call it words we can't say on this family friendly show. Yeah, but show. I, I mean, mine, yeah, mine's B- done, and I haven't. Mine's done, and I haven't drank all month. <laughs> that is true, but the, I, <laughs> I haven't been at my parents that much to to drink. Wow, well, and I did last. Yeah, I never said I had colds in January. Oh, so. that's right. Yeah, he didn't have any colds in January. I have a bunch yeah. of colds in Jan- and and so, and I'm bringing you some. It's fermenting, or pardon me, it's cold conditioning right now. But um, Simon, yeah, it, it, it carbonated. 
not carbonated. The filtering part, I think you agree, James, that it, it yeah. shouldn't affect it. Like whichever way is easiest for him in his process, do the filtering then. And you, another thing that to that that helps too is to remember don't don't think that you can just suck a bunch of trub and yeast through because yeah. if you if you try to do that, you will stop the filter up. So you still want to be smart about what you're filtering. You still want to try to filter somewhat clear beer. But when you get down to the end, you know, norm- normally you'll leave a little bit of clear beer at the bottom just so you don't suck any of the trub or yeast. With the filter, you don't have to worry about that because when you go all the way down to the bottom and when that starts coming, it'll 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 stop the filter up, but at least you'll get a little more than you normally would. But then you got to take into account the loss through the filter housing itself. So who knows? I mean, I've done it several times with good success. And there's been times when I pushed it too much and and uh, especially if you're talking about real powdery yeast, you probably want to go with a five and then a one because you want to separate that. The five will still pass some of that through and it'll 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 give time. It'll give it time to filter through both medias. And if you try to do a powdery yeast through a one micron, chances are it's going to go so slow or it could possibly stop up because of the yeast will clog it up. And you know, yeah, there's some pros and cons. And you know, people who listen, one of their first things, and you addressed it earlier, you're not too concerned with oxidation because it is mm-hmm. not getting splashed or anything. I mean, it's all a closed transfer process for lack right. of a better term, right? And I will, uh, I will run it into a little, a little one gallon bucket and then sh- sh- turn it off just to get flush. If there's any oxidation going, passing through the filter and the housing and all that, it's in that bucket and not in the keg. So I'll do that too. Yeah. We got to do a video. Cause I, I just hear yeah. my inbox is getting flooded right now as people are watching this episode. Like, so that would, that all sounds good, but I want to see what it looks like. So we're yeah, going to do the video. Good. We'll do the video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if we have beer next week to transfer. I don't think it's ready yet. Is it? There, well, yeah. we've got some. I've got that uh, Hell's Hellas that's in the spike conical right now, and um, but you know we've got the brew day tomorrow. So, well, the Hellas we could probably do it next week. You think so? Monday or Tuesday? Mm-hmm. I'll stay to Wednesday if I have to, man. I'll stay till Friday. Yeah. I don't want to see my family. That's already cold crashed a week. So you you already committed to stay until Wednesday yesterday. I I said if I needed to. That is true, and I need to, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> now you do <laughs> i love it simon thank you so much for submitting your question moving on to our third question of the show came from our buddy michael t who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com michael wrote i have to give todd hell because it feels like he will never attempt his brewing experiment bet with josh where he said he would mash on one saturday and then boil in cold side on the next saturday it's true that was like eight years ago now Um, Uh, i'm I'm very confident it'll work don't delete this yet because i do have a question is it possible to accidentally add oxygen to a fermented batch in a carboy from the beer sloshing around as i carry it from one place to another my my cold chamber is on one side of my home and my keg setup is on the other. It isn't that big of a house, but I am not as strong as I once was. And I fear that the beer inside my carboy is sloshing too much. I could keg where my cold chamber is, but I'd still need to carry the keg to my man cave on the other side of the house. I hope my fears are much ado about nothing. Mike, I like a Shakespeare reference every once in a while. Um, <laughs> let's address the first part. Todd, how come you haven't fulfilled? Do you, is it because you don't want to lose a bet to me? Why have you not done the, I think the Australians, is very popular down there, the hot bots or cold bots method. I forget what they call it, where they, they brew on one time and they do natural cool down in a bots and then they do, no, that's for the pitching side. How come you haven't done the experiment? Let's ask that. Uh, I guess next time I brew, I'll just have to take, so what I need to do, if I remember right, is you want me to take five gallons of wort, put it in the fridge and then, and then ferment it the next week. No, no, I think, I think he's. The way he described it, I have to go back and, and fact check you. I think you had said you could do the mash on one Saturday, store the store it the the wart from that, then on the next Saturday do the boil and, and cold side stuff. I think that's what you said. You could okay, do. yeah, I can do that. Or maybe it was all the warm side on one Saturday. I have to go back or whoever's listening. Yeah, whatever it is, I I can do it. 
just remind me and I, next time I brew, I'll just take five gallons out and at whatever step and, and I'll ferment it the following week. And if it doesn't work, that'll be my five gallons. I know it. I know it. Um, well, but you'll get $5 along with your five gallons. But as far as the, 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 the question quick. itself, the only thing that's missing there is he is asking. Um, so he's talking about the secondary. I mean, I obviously first and foremost, from a well, he may not secondary from a primary. There's absolutely no way that's you're going to have any problem because th there's tons of CO two and all the oxygen's gone. It's all CO two and a secondary. There's no way it's going to happen because all the oxygen's gone. All you got CO two because there's no way your secondary is going to sit there for two weeks and and have a blanket of oxygen. Uh, although I will say that when I put beer in a secondary, I always purge it. So I always stick a CO two line down in it. And I purge out all the uh, oxygen from the secondary glass carboy before I pour my beer into it because I don't like to slosh the beer into it with, um, with knowing that there's oxygen in there. Now, I will say it's almost certainly not going to be a problem in the secondary because if you fill from the bottom correctly and, and you do it, we've talked about it a lot before on the podcast, and you fill it up correctly, you're not going to have a problem because – you're very gently and it's pushing the oxygen out and then you just got a little bit, it always, you know, does a little bit more action and it's going to push that out. So I don't think it's going to be a problem no matter what, but I just to be safe. I purge everything. I purge my secondary, I purge my keg, I purge, I purge, I purge. He loves the movie series, the purge too. It's just, a, it's just a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I've only seen the previews. I've never seen the movie. Uh, James, you, you agree with Todd that uh, yeah. it's not, yeah, it, fact, it is much ado it, about nothing, especially because of that layer of CO2. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's completely, that's all that's in there is a blanket of CO2. Anybody that's had a, uh, a keg go, go, go out and you open it to clean it. What do you see in there? And that's CO2. That's you CO2. can see it plain as day. So it, it acts like a blanket. It, it, it insulates the top of the wart. And uh, there's just there's no reason to worry about that. My pop and I can relate, Michael, to this because we also he usually will cold condition. And and, we, and when I say relate, this is for me and my dad always usually was secondary. We we transfer to purge glass carboys and we put it in a fridge in his garage. But all of our kegging and all that's on the other side of his property in his game room. Y'all have been there before, guys. And mm -hmm. um, so I will go frequently when we're transferring to keg. I'll go to his garage. I'll, I'll carry the carboy because they're heavy and we don't have those nice carboy handles yet. And and it sloshes a little. I try to be as balanced as I can, but there's only so much you can do. But we've never had oxidation issues from that. I, again, because that headspace is all CO2 from the purge we did prior to transferring. Mm -hmm. And then when we transfer to the keg, we're purging that keg too. We're getting all the oxygen out. Now we do an open transfer, but because we purged the keg is why we feel confident when we run that liquid line from our siphon to the bottom of the keg and we start filling from the carboy into there, we're not going to yeah. have any issues because again, purge, purge, uh, purge. The only thing I would be concerned with, and that's the reason I purged my secondaries is for that very reason he was talking about carrying it across the room. I always fill my secondaries um, from my countertop because I need the gravity. And then I put them into one of my rooms and I, if I didn't purge, I would feel like I had some oxygen on the top. And if I'm walking and, and sloshing it around, I, I wouldn't like that. Absolutely. Although it probably wouldn't matter. I just wouldn't like My it. My main concern with glass carboys uh, transporting them is how slippery they are. I would just be say, Michael, that should be your main concern is that you're not – because it doesn't take a lot when they drop to just shatter and go everywhere. That's why a lot of people hate glass carboys. If you go on the old interwebs, the information highway, as they called it when Todd was a child. No, actually, they didn't have the internet when you were a child. But with the old <laughs> – no, We didn't have computers. <laughs> I mean, not, we did. They didn't, I mean, yeah, they, they didn't were have huge. when I was in high school. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, little old jab there. There. Um, they, if you go on the internet, you'll see P a lot of people go, Hey, for even for my secondary, I'm using PET carboys because I don't want to accidentally. I, I, one time I was like an inch and a half from the ground and it dropped a and a shard got stuck in my leg. And you know, I'm making that part up, but a lot of people have trauma from, from glass. Now, Todd over here, oh, those guys are weenies. Glass is the greatest. Todd will, when we, you do 
close transfers from your glass carboy and stare the living hell out of me because you're not supposed to pressurize glass much and you don't uh, it's only it's like three psi yeah but you always make sure it makes a weird noise and you're like hey <laughs> hey josh come stand over here <laughs> Oh, I hate it. That's one of the reasons why I haven't, from our glass carboys, we do open. And I'm only, I'm, I, this, I shouldn't do the air quotes. It is open transfer. We have the carboy auto siphon in the top and an open lid keg. We're not doing pressurized closed transfer, but uh, it's a weird, weird PTSD thing I have from hanging around Todd too much. And Why don't you do a closed one? I, I just explained. I have an irrational fear of exploding vessels. But that's irrational. <laughs> you know, when I here, let me digress real quick before our fourth question. When I when Todd hired me and he was like, hey, this year you're gonna be traveling a lot. And I told him I have a, a terrible fear of flying. You know what his solution was? Was to put me on a plane like every other week. It felt like it, it, it just like and, and the European travel one. It was like a month after being hired. He goes, oh, we're going to Germany. That flight, the way there was terrible. But I, I've gotten over my fear of flying. I, I haven't flown though since. <laughs> it's a lot of. It was a lot of fun to every once in a while look over at him and go. Ah! <laughs> he would. <laughs> he knows, especially at landing. What or or the my favorite was one flight we were going. I think it was when we were flying to baltimore perhaps and i'm sitting next to you and you and there was a little bit of turbulence and you go oh that's nothing one time i was in a plane and the oxygen mask fell down and when we were doing a, t- a nose dive and, and i was like oh, were you scared you go eh, if you die in a plane you die in a plane like you said it so nonchalantly like you don't get worked up in a plane like oh oh i'm about to die okay I guess that's uh, what's happening today. Where, yeah, well, it, we're all gonna die, you know. We are. Yeah, that's the that's the sound clip of this episode. We're all gonna die. Michael, thank you for submitting that question. And again, a reminder, guys, if and when I take your question on future episodes, I give you a twenty five dollar gift card to keckconnection.com. We have one fourth and final question for this week. Was a text message from our buddy Craig using the hotline three two five three zero five six one zero seven. Craig texted. How long is too long in secondary? Pale Ale is going on week six because I don't have a place to put it on tap. Thoughts? You're right, Todd. In the show notes of the title, I did call it um, how long is too long when cold conditioning when I should have put how long is too long in secondary. We'll talk about the distinguishing factors here in a little bit, but can is it right of me to say it depends on the style? Like how long is yeah, too long? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think with a Pell L, six weeks is probably getting towards a little too long in the secondary. But James, what are your thoughts? Uh-oh. Uh oh. I I can't yeah, hear James. Oh, now now we hear you. You were muted. Oh, you're back. You you were gone. I didn't do it though. Yeah, no, it's uh, six weeks. I agree. That's that's pushing it. I think that uh, you probably need to get that in a keg quick as possible. Because with a hop forward beer, even though pale ale is not the most hoppiest of, of hop forward beers, you're gonna lose that aroma hop after mm-hmm. sit sweets, right? I mean, like it's gonna it's just gonna be a a bland pale ale if you wait too long. Well, I mean, well, it, you it, you won't lose all of it, but I think that you know the good the nuanced flavor and aroma could be compromised. But I've, you know, I'm not a hop forward brewer so if you if you cold crashed it for six weeks and i mean really cold like in the 30s i think i mean obviously you'd, you'd be fine those are keggy yeah. temperatures right so or yeah, even yeah, even even maybe you know 40 i mean we don't we can't get to 30 right james we're, we're at yeah. the 40 42 range 40 range yeah the big so. bertha the the big the big one that we put the the coil in and insulated yeah. we can get it within three or four degrees of the chiller. Oh, wow. But our other one is 10. Oh, mine's, mine's been at like, uh, mine's probably been at 36, 37 lately, James, because I just let that whole building get cold as hell (laughs) under this cold front. So it's, it's been, uh, I mean, it's not thirties, but it, you know, it's down to like 60 in there. So it, 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 the, it actually gets down into the, you know, the, the higher thirties, mid thirties, thirties. And where so that, oh, that's, that's nice. And where Todd yeah. corrected me or why 
part of why he corrected me is because secondary fermentation does not always imply colder temperature no. conditions. Mm-hmm. Some people secondary in the the fifties or the six right like it's uh, or at room temperature or seventies or, yeah, or, or room temp. So so is with that understanding out there, James? Does it? Is it more affected? Like if he was doing secondary at room temp or if he was doing it in cold conditioning, does that now affect how much time oh, you have? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I think at room temperature, it, it can't stay as long as it could be if it was cold crashed. Because you got some things that are going on with the trub that's in the bottom of the primary that can cause, you know, it can cause. Uh, yeah, that's what I'd be worried about. Issues. More, yeah. more than not losing the hop aroma or flavor, I'd be more worried with stuff starting to turn yeah yeah but but so let's give craig the benefit if this was a pale ale at six weeks of room temp would that be a batch that might be turning i would, I would get, get it, it in a keg yeah as like quick James as possible yeah. Yeah. yeah but but okay and then so on the other side of the coin if this was a pale ale going on six sweets in a fridge is it now like oh not that big a deal or would you, same answer not just because you don't want to drink it but like physiologically speaking, same answer. Get in a keg quick because sit sweets is a lot for that style. Yeah, cold colds are a huge difference than room yeah. temperature. So, you know, cold I wouldn't be near as worried about it as if it was at room temp setting on the on the trub in a primary. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't be as big a deal on the secondary, but on a primary, everything's at the bottom, and it can cause you some problems at that length of time. Yeah, you know. I think one of the things that I think we do a lot on this show is we, we have all these, I have all these fridges and all these ways to cold crash stuff. I, I always got to remember that the vast majority of brewers and, and people that are starting out, especially don't have all that. So you are doing everything at room temperature. And I, and I think you got to be a lot more worried about this. If, if you're doing everything at room temperature. So, yeah. you know, be when you're, when you're done with your fur, with your primary, you know, you're doing your readings, you're checking to see what the gravity is. And you say, okay, I've hit the gravity I want. I'm, I'm boom. I'm going to move it into my secondary if that's what you do. And then, you know, you're going to leave it in there for a little while to hopefully clarify some, and then you're going to move it into bottles or into kegs and, and, you know, keep it going. If you, if you've got ways to keep things really cold, then uh, again, it's just, it's not as big of a deal, but most people don't. And, and we have to always remember that. That is true. And I'm, I'm most people that you're, I, I, I had to take over my wife's uh, garage fridge and I say my wife's, pardon me. I reclaimed that fridge for my beer fridge. And I told her, listen, woman, you put these groceries yeah. in your own fridge. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. sure that's exactly yeah, totally. That's exactly that's what exactly how it went down. And then her divorce lawyer uh, contacted me on <laughs> on Instagram. It was weird. It was a private message. Uh, you've been served. No, we, I had to beg, like, honey, please. Uh, this batch is for the boys. Please, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta put the ten gallons in there. Can I please move your eggs a little bit around? And she goes, oh, I guess, whatever. I do want to get, <laughs> I do want to get a chest freezer and, and make a proper uh, fermentation chamber. And I think that would, you know, I can't stress enough. Well, one, how it's the best time ever, guys, to be alive as a home brewer in 2022 because of the opportunities that you have if you have the space and the budget. Uh, but you, but said, you said that in 2021. Uh, yeah. Did I just say 2022? 2020. Yeah. Oh, my bad. 2022. It's 2022. It's almost February. No, no, no. Oh. I said you said that oh. in 2021. <laughs> I did. And, and every year. Saying, yeah. Every year. I can't stress that enough. It gets better every year. It gets better every year. But what I'm going with is that we can, you know, temperature control is at your fingertips if you have the budget in the space. And I, I just would like to make the best beer possible and having temperature control from the beginning to the end is how I feel I'm going to achieve my best beer ever. So proper fermentation chamber is great. The primaries I've been doing in my office here, that mini split, Todd, you're the one who gave me the idea because your little, your room in the barn, you're like, oh, I can keep it consistently where I need it for the whole primary. And I was like, well, my room is about, it's a little bit bigger than those rooms that you have. And these mini splits are so overkill. That's been easy. And it's hardly any electricity. I've been so impressed with how efficient these are. Yeah, they're, 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 those those middle rooms are super small, so you're not doing much at all. In fact, y'all y'all will laugh at me. I have to admit to this. I I uh, you know I've got the cider that Josh and I experimented with in in one of that room, and then I've got my mead in there, and then I had 
six, uh, six buckets with beer in it. Well, when I moved them into the secondaries, I didn't have all my, my, my fridge wasn't done. My, my freezer chest freezer wasn't done. Cause I repainted the inside as y'all know. And the other one was a mess. So I moved them into another room and turned the, it down as far as it would go, which was like 60 degrees. And they got cold in there. It got like 59 degrees. <laughs> so I, I cold crashed in one of those rooms for a couple of days while I was getting everything cleaned up. So, uh, oh, and by the way, I have to say, the, you know, I repainted the, the, the keyser and I used a, a, a very old school oil primer, oil paint, and then a really good caulk that, that sealed all the edges and sealed the little drain hole in the bottom. Cause I realized when you have a drain hole in the bottom, it just drains out and goes all over your floor. So, uh, it's basically like an aquarium in there. Now I could fill it up and put fish in there. And, uh, anyway, it, it works really, really well, but if you do happen to use, this was Rust-Oleum out of a can oil based paint, uh, it would not dry. I had a long time. It took a long time to dry and I thought it had failed. I ended up putting a space heater in there and leave it running it for about a day. And it totally dried up and got really hard. So I think the problem was so it, cause people may run into this as you're brewing and building keysers and everything. I brewed the day that I, that I primed it the second, put the second coat of primer on. And there was so much moisture in that room that I think that's what kept the paint from carrying. So Could be. you get a lot of moisture in a room when you, when you brew 18 gallons of beer without a fan, without an exhaust. You were so perturbed that you threatened to write a strongly worded letter to the CEO of the paint company. I was there. You were like, I'm going to leave a bad oh, Yelp no. review. And I, you're I, like, I, 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 all I said was I, I, I wrote a letter to the company, not to the CEO, just to their customer right. support, right. asking them what I should do. I know, but you were like, I'm going to leave a bad Yelp review. And I was like, Todd, they don't have Yelp uh, listings for paint companies. You're I'm going to write a letter. Making, you're making that up. <laughs> but it's not unrealistic. I did make that up, but it's on brand. Um, Craig, I'm sorry. I, I let us digress so much. But yeah, uh, with your pale ale, if it's in secondary and that does does not mean cold conditioning. Get it in a keg, like now. Are we, we're yeah. still talking. I thought we'd finish that question. No, no, I'm just wrapping it up because I'm about to wrap oh, up the oh, show. Okay, if okay. it's in the fridge and and you don't have the space, you're a little bit better. But that maybe, maybe what Mr. Burns always tells me: prior proper planning prevents pale ale it's- in a secondary for too long. Right, <laughs> uh, you, you bottle it if you had to, right? And put those bottles in a fridge. If because uh, I'm assuming he's he's kegging. If he's saying he doesn't have place to put it on tap, the assumption is. But if it gets to be too long and you still don't have space for whatever reason, you I don't like recommending this, but you could bottle and then find a fridge to. You can always find space in any given fridge for bottles. I I feel like, but anyway, I appreciate the question, guys. That's all I have for this week. I I have something else. Oh, go ahead. I would. I would like to uh, request something from the listeners and let them know if you want to get your question on, it's much more likely to get on the show. If you will call it in and, and, uh, and tell us your question and your lovely voice, because I really like listening to the, to the questions and having the listeners, you know, talk about it. And there, and, uh, I, I think that's a lot of fun. So if yeah. uh, from going forward, if you'll call into that number, which Josh will give you in a moment, and and actually record your a voicemail. We want to play that on the show so we can listen to uh, to what you have to say. Todd always every week that I don't include a voicemail, he's just like, "Well, I don't have any." I go, "Listen, I've got about fifteen from Marty from Omaha, which we love, Marty. I love <laughs> you, and I'm, I'm going to play it next week." But I was like, "I can't every week." And and some of the other ones that leave it, I get a lot of drunk voicemails that aren't questions at all, but just like, "Hey, where's my gift card?" And like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I yeah, hey, I, I encourage you to play some of those too. Okay, okay. next week we'll have a <laughs> next week's episode. We'll have a greatest hits of our voicemail. <laughs> but yeah, I told Todd like, what well, maybe you know, I, I would love to have uh, every episode be exclusively voicemail. Maybe we need to restructure the gift cards. If you do uh, uh, a text one, you get a fifteen dollar gift card. But then if you do a voicemail, you get a twenty five dollar. Ooh, gift card. I like that. You want to start doing that? I like that. Yeah, let's okay. do that. I'm a brainiac, a big brain when I need to be. <laughs> yeah, so, that's a good one. I like that. So going forward, we, if and when we take your text based question, you get a fifteen dollar gift card to keckconnection.com. <laughs> but when we take 
your voicemail, you get a $25 gift card to Tech Connection, courtesy of Mr. Todd Burns and his generosity. Uh, I do like that. <laughs> I know. Big brain. Anyways, guys. I'll, so anyway, I'll, text your questions in from yeah. now on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I really want voice. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I'll see y'all tomorrow for the live brew day. Right. Remember, everybody, when uh, if you're at any level of Chub Club, check your inbox for the link tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Central. We're starting to live stream. We will start the live stream on our Brow Todd Brew Day. So with all that being said, gentlemen, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Bye. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Imperial Yeast. Get a free pack of Imperial Yeast with your monthly recipe kit when you join our Chub Club at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. 